Hey, this is Mark Williams of Swine Life Barbecue. Today we're cooking a prime rib on our s, &S kettle. Of course, you know I gotta put that rotisserie on it, get all them great crust, all that flavor on the outside. But what's gonna set this prime rib apart? We're gonna make an injection with all the trimmings, the bones off the backside, get them mixed up with some mushrooms, pack it full of that umami flavor, which I love. I can't wait to see how this one's gonna turn out. Let's get started. So we got our Dutch oven heating up, got one pound of mushrooms in it. We're gonna incorporate a ton more flavor to bring all that beefy flavor to this prime rib. So as that's cooking down, we're gonna go ahead and add 32 ounces of beef broth. We got 10 garlic cloves going in, get that mixed up. Now we're just gonna trim this down. Luckily, our butcher has already removed the plate and the bones. So we'll just cut these into sections, just like so. May have to get a little rough with it. And they're gonna go in the pot too, help make that good beef broth. So this rib out here still has the tail on it. I'm gonna remove that, because I want that flavor to be on these mushrooms and in that injection. So we'll just cube that up. You can render this down, make beef tallow, however you'd like. We're gonna add it to these mushrooms and get it over in the pot with those bones as well. So that's most of what's gonna go in those mushrooms. You can see we got a little bit of fat, silver skin on top. That's not gonna cook down. All we're gonna do is shave that off and get rid of it. Take a good sharp knife, run underneath that silver skin, take your time and walk it off. You'll have one line of fat right here that you're not gonna be able to get off and that's perfectly fine, that's good fat. But as you trim, you'll see what's stringy, what's got silver skin underneath it. Just expose as much of this meat as you can. That's gonna build a great bark, good crust. How we're gonna get flavor in it. That looks good to me. We're ready to get it on the skewer. Choice grade's got good marbling, gonna be excellent. While we're waiting on our beef broth injection to cook down, we're gonna go ahead and get this prime rib tied up. I definitely wanna tie it tight just because it's gonna be on that rotisserie. You don't want it flopping around. You want a good uniform shape, so I always pull it tight as I can. Twist, that way it'll hold your knot tight. Go ahead and do that one more time. Just the old kindergarten double knot. Just like so. Now, even if I was not cooking on a rotisserie, I would still tie it, because as all this fat starts to render, this muscle starts cooking, it's gonna lay out flat like a pancake. Now, it's not gonna lay completely out flat, but you're gonna lose your shape. You just want these strings to help hold it together. It'll cook a little more even, present a lot better, and just be an overall better prime rib. We're gonna trim off the excess. So we got it tied up. It's time to get some seasoning on it. We got our prime beef. Go to medium to heavy layer, good coat on it, because I mean, like I say, this is a big chunk of meat. We want to pack the flavor to it. And you want to use just salt and pepper, man, go for it. I'm not telling you how to cook your prime rib. You don't worry about how good this one's going to be. It's going to be a good crust. Killer hogs, steak rub. A little bit coarser, more onions, more garlic, some more pepper, all those flavors that I like. Now it's time to play with the sword. Got a skewer here. I'm going to run it straight through the middle. Just like so. Take our other skewer, turn it 90 degrees, tighten it up. Make sure it's on there good, not wanting to flop around. A few more minutes, this injection will be ready. We'll get it pumped up and it goes on the pit. So our broth and mushroom has been cooking for about an hour. I'm gonna give it a taste and make sure we don't need to add any more salt or anything to it. Don't need nothing, that is perfect. Scoop some out, put it in a mason jar just to allow it to cool. Get everything resituated back in here. Get the lid on it, let this keep simmering. So that's gonna be mighty fine on the side. Give that just a few minutes, let it cool off at room temperature. We'll get the prime rib injected. It's gonna go on the pit. So while we let this injection cool off, we're gonna go ahead and get our little SNS s kettle fired up. Got about a half a chimney of Royal Oak charcoal. Get our tumbleweed lit. Give this about 20 minutes. We'll be ready to get this prime rib on the rotisserie. Let it start spinning, getting happy in all them juices. So our injection's cooled off about room temp. Got just a regular old cheap injector. We'll see how much this roast right here will hold. Kind of move it around. Some of it's gonna leak out. I tasted this injection, I knew. I mean, it's just beef, great flavor, good salt, good pepper. And you're not adding anything to this prime rib that wasn't already there. I mean, you're using everything from it to put that flavor in it. And that's what I like about this injection. So be careful, make sure ain't nothing too hot in here. We're gonna dump a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side. Try to get it as even as possible. Got a ribeye loin. Get it put in place, our tissue motor on, she's a spinning. Sprinkle just a little bit right over the top. 
touch it up. We'll let this flipping ribeye flip for about an hour. We'll check internal. We're shooting for about a 120. Just keep a close eye on it. I don't have a probe in it just because my probe I have right now has got wires on it. That'll just be a mess. We'll just keep a close eye. Try not to overcook it. Nail that perfect medium rare doneness and let this rotisserie do its job. So our primer has been on for about an hour and 30 minutes. It's temped out at 120. I want to get this off and let y'all check that out. Great crust, packed full of moisture. I mean, that is beautiful. Time to get it off the most important part and let this baby rest. So we let this prime rib rest for about 30 minutes. Still got the skewer on it. So the first thing we got to do, get the skewer out of the way. We don't need it anymore. We'll slide that in off. Gently slide the whole skewer out of this end. So we'll let this prime rib rest for a few minutes while we go over what we did. Just as a quick recap, we start off with an eight pound ribeye roast. The butcher had already removed the bones, had them tied back on. We simply just took the bones off, got them in our stock pot. Any trimmings we removed, it wasn't a stock pot too with our mushrooms, and that's what we made our injection from. I wanted to inject it just to get some salt down in that prime rib, and just to add another layer of that great flavor. Got it seasoned up with our prime beef and a little bit of steak from Killer Hogs. Got a great crust. That little rotisserie done an awesome job over some roll up charcoal. Looks great. I can't wait to cut it up and see how we did. So we'll get the strings out of the way first thing. We can't eat them. Of course, they were already pretty tight. Man, once we injected this thing, they sure enough were tight. That one right there is hid. Now you can do the same recipe on any pitch you have. I just wanted to see what this little rotisserie would do. Why not take y'all along with it and see how it turns out? Dark slicing. We're gonna go ahead and cut off this end pretty good size. Stuff down through there. Do about half inch cut, tender as can be, what it feels like, like so. Gotta get that outside edge. Perfect cooked on it. Tender. Good flavor, man. That bark. That bark's where it's at. Go in here and get some of that spun out. I know it's gonna be dynamite. Melt in your mouth. Pack full of flavor. Go in here and try these mushrooms to go along with it. It's hard to beat beef and mushrooms. That's my two favorite food groups. Man, y'all gotta give this recipe a try. That's a wrap for today at Swine Life. We appreciate y'all checking this video out. Y'all make sure to have a Merry Christmas. Y'all got any questions, shoot us a message on Facebook or Instagram. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see y'all next time.